Hello, this is Tony Hiller from realclimatescience.com. 70 years ago, atmospheric carbon dioxide levels were very low. And according to NASA, temperatures 70 years ago were quite cool as well. So according to the mainstream media theory of climate, the climate must have been very nice and very stable. Let's take a look at the historical record and see how credible their theory is. This was the news from 70 years ago this week, June 10th, 1953. Massachusetts was hit by the deadliest tornado in New England history with more than 75 dead. A few hours earlier, at least 139 people were killed by tornadoes in Michigan and Ohio. Shortly before that, a tornado wiped out a family in Nebraska. During the middle of May 1953, tornadoes killed dozens of people in Waco and San Angelo, Texas. At the beginning of May, a tornado in Georgia killed more than a dozen people. In the middle of March 1953, tornadoes killed more than a dozen people in and around Wichita Falls, Texas. On December 6, 1953, tornadoes in Mississippi killed at least 28 people. That's how the year 1953 ended, and at the beginning of the year, the weather was even worse. From January 31st to February 1st, 1953, hurricane-force winds over the North Sea generated a massive storm surge. The ensuing flooding killed more than 2,000 people in the Netherlands and England. From April to June 1953, almost the entire state of Louisiana was affected by flooding. It was reported in 1953 that polar ice was melting so quickly, sea level might rise as much as 300 feet. This could drown huge seaport cities like New York, Boston, San Francisco, and London. An unprecedented late summer heat wave hit much of the United States at the end of August and early September. It was the first time that New York City had more than three consecutive days over 95 degrees Fahrenheit. There was also an unprecedented heat wave across the United States at the end of September 1953. On September 29, 1953, about half of the United States was above 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and much of it was above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And once again, at the end of October 1953, the eastern U.S. experienced another unprecedented heat wave. During June, around the time of the record Michigan and Massachusetts tornadoes, there was a heat wave in Texas which was causing the streets to explode. And in India, scores of people were dying daily from sunstroke in a record heat wave that reached a daytime high of 123 degrees. The year 1953 began with flooding and ended with severe drought from coast to coast in the United States. By the middle of 1954, most of the United States was in drought. 1954 brought record drought, heat waves, and hurricanes. These included Hurricane Hazel, the deadliest hurricane in Canada's history, the last two major hurricanes to hit New England, and the highest temperature ever recorded in Illinois. But 1954 will be the topic of a different video. According to NASA, the 1950s were quite cool around the world and carbon dioxide levels were very safe and low. Richard Feynman said, It doesn't matter how beautiful your theory is. If it doesn't agree with the experiment, it's wrong. There isn't one shred of evidence to support the idea that the climate is less extreme, safer, or stable at lower levels of carbon dioxide. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on the climate scam for the past 15 years. You can visit him, Kyrie, Caesar, Toki, Upla, and the four new puppies on the web at realclimatescience.com.